Someday I'm going to sing in there, Taylor said, staring out the side window of the Swift family Jeep Wagoneer at the Bluebird Cafe as they drove by. But that's a bar, Andrea Swift, Taylor's mother said, driving. So? Leanne Rhymes sang in there. If it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Whatever you say, Tay, Andrea said, and continued driving. Taylor stared out the side window as her mother drove slowly down Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. They were looking for record companies with names Taylor recognized. She sat beside her mother in the front seat, and her younger brother Austin had the back seat all to himself. She had a half-full box of demo CDs with her picture on it and the words, Call Me, boldly printed under her headshot that was taken by her neighbor at their Christmas tree farm. On the album cover, she had dressed herself as a country singer in a blouse and skirt and cowboy boots. Her long, white blonde mane of unruly hair blew in wings across her face in the photo, just as they did now while they drove. Music Row, on Commerce Street in the heart of Nashville, was where all the record companies set up shop. They had already stopped at 19 companies, and Taylor had personally left a demo at each stop. Unfortunately, that was 19 record companies and 19 rejections. But this did not discourage her. It hurt on the inside, but she was not going to show it, and she was not going to give up. She did not wait all 11, almost 12, years of her life to bail on her dreams just because a few record companies did not see what she saw. Then she saw it and screamed. Andrea, terrified at her daughter's scream, slammed on the brakes, and the car skidded to a stop in the middle of traffic. Horns blared. I swear, Taylor, you almost scared the life out of me, Andrea said. Look, Taylor said pointing at the building with UMG on the side of it, along with MCA and Mercury Records. It was Reba McIntyre and George Strait's label. Andrea sighed. I think we just found number 20. She quickly eased the wagoneer to the curb just past the building. Taylor unbuckled her seatbelt. She grabbed a single CD jewel case from a stack resting on the center console. Besides the headshot and call me on the front, on the back was her Pennsylvania telephone number, her email address, and a short list of cover songs she sang to karaoke background music. She turned to her mother. I've got a good feeling about this, she said. Not me, eight-year-old Austin shouted from the back seat. I want to go home. Soon, Andrea said, hold your horses. They all laughed, and Taylor gave her little brother a look, and he scrunched down in his seat. Taylor threw open the passenger door and got out, slammed the door shut, walked slowly and carefully, and counted every step. Her mother and brother followed close behind. Andrea never let Taylor go up to a label alone. The building got closer, and Taylor's heart raced, just like all the other times. She was kind of used to it after 19 stops, but she just could not contain her excitement. She started skipping to get to the building quicker. When she got to the front door, her mom and brother were right behind her. She kissed her mom on the cheek. For luck, she said. Back in Wyoming, Missing, Pennsylvania, Taylor had recorded four songs, backed up by canned karaoke music. She could not afford a band, and she couldn't play any instruments. It was okay. She loved karaoke. She sang Here You Come Again, originally recorded by Dolly Parton, There's Your Trouble by the Dixie Chicks, and One Way Ticket by Leanne Rimes. Leanne Rimes was her hero, not only because she sang a mean country tune, but also because she made it big at age 13. The fourth song was Hopelessly Devoted by Olivia Newton-John, it was her favorite song from Greece, a play Taylor did the year before. She took in a deep breath and went inside. In the lobby, Taylor marched up to the woman behind the front desk. And when she looked up from her paperwork, Taylor went into gear. Hi, I'm Taylor Swift. I'm 11 and I want a record deal. 
She handed the woman her CD. Call me, she said, and flashed her cheery smile. The receptionist smiled. Well, aren't you a cutie, she said. But we don't make record deals with anyone under 18. You know why? Because kids don't listen to country. Leanne Rhymes was number one when she was 13, Taylor countered. The woman chuckled. Well, you got me there, sweetie, she said. Your telephone number on this? Yes, ma'am, Taylor said. All right, we'll be in touch. Really? The woman behind the desk took a deep breath, then gave her a weary, disappointed look. You never know. Taylor bit her lip and turned and raced out, letting the door close behind her. The woman behind the desk watched her go, then tossed the CD into a box marked Demos behind her, where it landed on dozens of other demo CDs. Well, Andrea asked, as soon as Taylor came out. They started walking back to the car. Well, what? What did they say? She thought I was cute, Taylor said. The usual, go away and come back when you're 18. Kids don't listen to country. She pouted and shrugged. Maybe they don't now, she said, but they will. I listen to it. She thought about it for a moment. Can we go back to the motel and see if anybody called? She asked. They both got into the car. Sure, honey, Andrea said, and started the car. When the traffic was clear, she pulled out and drove away. Back at the motel, Taylor stared at her mom, who was on the phone with her dad back in Why Missing. She blew him a goodbye kiss, hung up, and managed to smile in her daughter's direction. Taylor crossed her arms. That's not a real smile, she said. Andrea put her arm around her daughter. You're too smart for me, she said. What did Dad say? Taylor asked. Who called? Sorry, Tay, Andrea said. No one? Taylor said, trying to figure out where to look. She didn't want to look into her mom's eyes because she might cry, and she didn't want to do that. Andrea heard the disappointment in her voice. You're not giving up, are you? Heck no, Taylor said. Maybe we should stay a few more days. Not a chance, Andrea said, shaking her head. Vacation's over. You gotta get back to school. We are leaving tonight, so let's get packed, she said. Then the phone rang. Andrea snatched up the receiver. The man at the other end said he was an executive at a music company and he came across Taylor's demo with the real cute picture on the front. Who am I speaking with? He asked. This is Taylor's mother, Andrea Swift. I'd like to speak with Taylor if I may, he continued. I called the number on the CD and your husband gave me this number, Mrs. Swift, he said politely. Andrea turned to her daughter and handed the phone to her. It's for you! Taylor's blue eyes grew wide as she took the phone and held it to her ear. Yes, this is Taylor Swift, she said, then paused and listened to the man talk. Andrea couldn't hear what they were saying, so she moved closer and tried to put her ear closer to the receiver. Taylor nodded. Uh-huh, she said, and listened some more. Okay, thank you, she said, and hung up. Andrea could not wait any more. Well, she blurted out. He said I was cute, Taylor said, dejected. Don't need a weatherman to tell me that, she said. Andrea could see she was disappointed. What else did he say, honey? He had some advice and said it probably was worth what I paid for it, which was nothing, but he was going to say it anyway, Taylor said, pursing her lips. And? Andrea said. And, he said, everybody brings him karaoke demos of other people's songs. He said I had a good voice, and I was cute, and I would go far. But I gotta try something new instead of just singing other people's songs. How dare he? Andrea protested. Taylor hung her head, heartbroken, then went over to the bed and fell back on it and sighed.
Andrea got the family car on the road by 9 p.m. Taylor sat in front and Austin in back. It was a 650-mile drive from Nashville, Tennessee to Wyom Missing, Pennsylvania, and they were going to drive all night and all day the next day, and then some to get home in one piece. Taylor stayed up and watched the scenery roll by in the dark, just outside her window. She thought about many things, including new things she should try. You know what I gotta do, Mom? Taylor said. What's that, Tay? I've been thinking. Maybe the guy was right. About my CD. It's just karaoke versions of other people's songs, she said. Ronnie said the same thing. He said I should learn to play. What do you want to do, honey? Andrea asked. Something else. Something different. She went back to daydreaming. Wasn't she almost 12? Didn't she already have many amazing memories about growing up? Didn't she already write hundreds of poems? And even a book? She could tell her story in songs. She thought back to how she got to Nashville in the first place. She remembered how some books by famous authors started with the line, I am born. Although she did not remember her own birth, she knew all about it because mom and dad talked about it all the time. So it was a memory in her head for as long as she could remember. It all started at a Christmas tree farm where she was born in Cumru Township, Pennsylvania. She thought back to that snow flurry mom always talked about on that special day in December of 1989. 